Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over my best tips to help you improve your results in your A-levels. So I know I haven't uploaded any videos or content in some time, but you know, just started uni and I'm getting back into the, the groove of things, so I hope you guys don't mind. Before I get into the rest of the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so you can stay up to date with all my videos. And now let's get straight into the video. So my top tip to help you revise more effectively in your A-levels is to make sure that you make good notes. Now this doesn't mean that you should just be writing down every single thing that you learn in your lessons. It means that you should be finding the key information and jotting it down in your notes so that you can review it later. You need to make sure that your notes are clear and concise and they get straight to the point because when you're trying to revise them before your exams you don't want to be scrambling through and trying to find all the important information within like a load of notes. So the best thing to do is to find out what topic you're going to be learning that week. So for example let's say you're going to be going over photosynthesis or something like that. Make sure that you go over the topic in your textbook that you've been recommended or look online so that you can have a bit of information about what you should be expecting in your lesson. If you have some background information, you can understand what things you need to be focusing on more. Because bear in mind, most of the time teachers are going to give you a lot of information that you need to process. But if you know the specific things that are covered in your specification and covered on your course, you'll be able to, you know, sort out your information quickly. So in the ideal situation, before the lesson, you would have gone over the topic that you'll be learning. As a result of this, you'll know all the key information that you need to jot down on your notes. And if you've done some good pre-reading, you'll also know what sections you don't quite understand, and in the lessons, you can use that time to ask the teacher for any extra information so you can fill out your notes more. It's important to note that everyone understands or interprets their notes in different ways. So when you're writing down your notes, make sure that you write them in a way that you understand and in a way that is clear and concise. My next tip is to make sure that you find out how you revise the most effectively. So some people like myself just like to write a load of notes and just, you know, splurge and rewrite until the information kind of sticks in their head. Other people find it useful when they go and write flashcards. Some people like to draw diagrams or pictures and other people like to watch videos. Everyone learns in different ways and everyone revises in different ways and there's no point copying someone else that gets high grades because their way of revision might not suit you. I'm sure if you ask every single person that scored highly in their A-levels how they revise, they'd all have completely different methods. However, one thing holds true. Everyone does the technique that works for them. There's no point for you guys to force a way of revision that you're not comfortable with. So you need to spend the time to find an effective revision method. And the way to do this is simply through trial and error. You need to just try all the different methods and find out which ones suit you the best. So as I said, I just like writing a load of notes and interpreting them over time. However, other people really do enjoy flashcards and there's a lot of amazing apps that you can use to make flashcards. I'll link some of them down below in the description. On top of that, other people like to use like diagrams and pictures. You can find these in textbooks or you can make them yourself using the information that you learn in your lessons. And lastly, another really effective way is to just watch videos online. There's a lot of places online where there are videos that go over A-level content in quite good depth. Obviously, YouTube is a great platform, but on top of this, more specific ones are Khan Academy. These videos go over a lot of topics related to A-levels, so I'll make sure I put a link for Khan Academy down below. On top of this, just make sure that you're a bit extensive in your search when you're looking on YouTube, and I'm sure you'll find some amazing channels. If you're interested in me going over some A-level content, please let me know down below in the description, and I'll see if I can do that. And I'll try and make some videos in the future going over the biology and chemistry A-levels. My third tip to help you revise more effectively is to make sure that you identify your weak sections early. It's important to find out your weak points because you don't want to be caught out with a six marker on your weakest topic and get zero marks. For me, when I was revising, the boring topics were the one I found the hardest to revise for. And I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of topics in biology and chemistry or whatever other subjects you're doing that are really, really boring. And it's okay to find topics harder or easier than others. However, you need to make sure that you patch up these weaknesses early so that you do well in the future. One way to find your weak topics is by doing past papers. So going over the different papers and seeing which sections you do worse in on average. On top of this, in general, you'll kind of know what topics you struggle with. So just make sure you're actively trying to make better notes and going over more difficult questions online to try and improve your score. I know a lot of people fall into the habit of doing questions on topics that they're very comfortable with, but this isn't a good habit because it just makes sure that you get better at something that you're already very good at and you neglect the things that you really need to improve. So it's a negative cycle. On top of this, in your exams, not all topics are weighted evenly. So you might be really unlucky one year and most of your paper will have you know, questions on the topics that you're really weak at. And if you haven't revised them properly, you're just going to fail. So again, make sure you identify those weak sections early and patch them up as soon as possible. Of course, if you don't enjoy learning the topic, that's fine. You can just do little bits every week. But the idea is you need to keep it in the back of your mind and make sure that you're you know, actively doing work to improve it. My next tip is to make sure you go over your A-level specification. A lot of people neglect the A-level specification and they don't really think it's that important. They think that all the content that they need to learn is going to be taught in their lessons. But trust me, sometimes teachers don't go over things in as much detail as you might like. I'm sure everyone's had this situation where they've done an exam paper and they've been like, wait a minute, I swear our teacher didn't teach us this. And that's because sometimes some spec points aren't taught in as much detail as they should. And that's because most of the time teachers are trying to prioritize the harder topics or, you know, things that have a lot of content. 
where small spec points might just fall through the cracks. So make the effort to go through the specification for each of your subjects and note down all the topics that you've learned and all the notes you've made. I'm 100% sure you're gonna find things that you didn't realize you had to know. And once you find these things, you can make the effort to start learning them in your own time. So you need to make the effort to go over the specification. Once you've done this and you've gone over the content, you can go to your teacher and ask for a set of questions relating to them or just ask for more explanations on these more difficult or like smaller topics. Of course, most topics will be covered by the teachers in quite a lot of detail. However, the point of this is just to make sure that you get 100% of the content learned and you don't have any weird questions coming up in your exams. Of course, there's always exceptions, but we're trying to minimize the risk and you know increase your opportunities of getting that A star. My next tip is quite an important one, and this is to make sure that you do as many past papers as possible. I know so many people that know the content of A-level biology inside out, but still can't perform on the exam. This is because a lot of the time, even though you might know the content, you may not know the exact way to answer the question. Exam technique is such an important thing when it comes to A-levels, because there's so many questions that require applied knowledge, and if you're not able to identify what type of question is being asked, you're really going to struggle to get those six out of six marks or the top marks. So in order to counteract this, and in order to improve your exam technique, you need to go over a lot of past papers so that you get used to the style of questions that are being asked. On top of this, you need to learn what all the different buzzwords mean, like describe, evaluate, state, etc. These will all change the way that you have to answer a question and will change how your marks are awarded. For example, with evaluation statements, in general, you're trying to present an argument. So you're trying to show the pros and cons of the specific thing mentioned in the question. With a describe question, you're trying to give the basic outline of a topic that you're trying to present. This is different from an explain question. This is because explain questions go more into depth about why why things happen, while describe questions are about how things happen. I know I might not have explained that the best way, however, in a future video I'll be going over some different A-level questions and showing you the difference between a describe and explain question. A lot of the time people get those two confused and they lose a lot of marks because they answer the question incorrectly. But in general, if you do pass papers and you go over your questions and mark them using the official mark schemes, you'll find out what the examiners are looking for for a perfect answer. Pass papers are also a fantastic way to find out which sections need more work and they're also a great way to find out what types of questions you struggle with. This leads back to finding out your weaknesses very early and if you can start doing past papers and finding your weaknesses you can iron them out before you get to the real exams. Relying solely on your knowledge and the content that you've learned is not enough to do well in your A-levels. You really really need to understand the question styles and how to answer the questions effectively. So my final revision tip for your A-levels is to make sure that you organize your time effectively. Now I know this is a blanket statement but there's a lot of ways to optimize your time management. One really obvious way to optimize your time management is to make a timetable where you note down all the topics you want to cover in that week or every single day. Another way to optimize your time is to use all the free periods you have to revise in or to go over content you find difficult. However, my favorite way to time manage is a bit less structured. At the start of the week, I just like to write down a load of topics that I want to cover by the end of the week. I won't necessarily say on what days I need to cover them or how long I need to cover them for. However, I'll just say I need to cover these topics by the end of this week. So throughout the week, I'll find time to go over these topics and learn them and do questions on them. And for me, that was the best way for me to utilize my time because I don't really like timetables and I can't really stick to them. But this more general way of just writing down topics that I need to cover throughout the week is more effective for me and one app website that I use that really helped me out is called Toggle. I'll have a link for it down in the description. It's basically a time tracking app where you can write down the tasks that you're going to do and it will time it for you and write it down in like a log. So for example, if you're gonna start revision, you just go into Toggle, write down the topic you're gonna be revising. You can assign a color as well and it will start a timer for you. And once you're done, you just stop the timer and it will add it to a log and pie chart where you can see how much work you've done throughout the week or the month or the year. I just find it really effective because it shows if I'm actually doing the work that I said I'm going to do throughout the week. And it helps you see how much work you actually do. Because so many times you lie to yourself and say, oh, I've done like three hours of work today. But Toggle really nails it home because it shows how long you've actually been working for. So for me, that was the best way for me to organize my time. However, some people enjoy timetables or having a more structured manner of learning. So you can do that as well. Just find whatever is easiest for you. So that was my video and I hope you guys enjoyed. This video is more of a general A-level revision advice video. However, if you want more specific revision advice when it comes to A-levels, please let me know down below in the description. I can go over any biology, chemistry, or psychology topics because they're the three I did at A-level. And if you have any queries about revision or A-levels in general, please write them down in the description box below or DM me on Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, I upload different content on there as well. You can check out my Instagram down in the description below and my TikTok as well. They're both the same handle, at Faris Den. On top of this, if you enjoyed the video, please ensure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all my videos. I always love hearing any new ideas that you guys want me to cover. So if there's anything you guys struggle with or things you want me to cover, please write them down in the description box or DM me on Instagram. Thank you for watching and I hope this video was useful.